Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Oregon Explore. I'm your host, Owen Sammons, and today my guest is Matilda Middleton, and she is the organist here at the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd in Lexington, Kentucky. So as usual, pull up a comfy chair, pour your favorite beverage, and get ready for a tour of this organ on Oregon Explore. For our special Easter episode of Organ Explorer, we visit the Episcopal Church of the Good Shepherd, located on the corner of East Main Street and Bell Court. This English country Gothic building serves as a tribute to the equine industry in Kentucky. On a plaque in the narthex, it reads, To the glory of God, this church is given to him by the lovers of the horse from all over the country as a token of appreciation of their father's goodness to his children, man. I've linked a document in the video description that further illustrates this connection. Today, we welcome Good Shepherd's artist in residence, Alicia Helm McCorvey.
I'm here at the console with Matilda Middleton. Uh, so Matilda, tell me, what's interesting about uh, the organ here at Good Shepherd? So the organ comes to us from an Indianapolis-based organ company called Goulding and Wood, mm -hmm. founded by Tom Wood and John Goulding. Okay. And this is their Opus 50, or their 50th instrument. So one of their babies, right? Here at Good Shepherd, it's a beautiful instrument. As you can see, it's a rather large instrument. <laughs> Lots of potential, lots of color that you hear in the uh, settings of Wade and Dewada right. and in the Wagner, so it can do a lot of things. It can, it can perform Bach well, it can accompany hymns, it can play gospel style. <laughs> um, so it's just a really uh, what we call an eclectic instrument that's suitable for um, a, a good sized, decent sized church like this. Right. Yeah, so lots of dynamic variations. So oh. often um, when I'm accompanying the choir, I'll use what's called the swell, or, you know, mm -hmm. this and the choir, which are both under expression. So the boxes are closed, there are mini blinds kind of thing that are closing <laughs> um, to, to soften the sound. And that's what I'll use when I'm accompanying our choir here. And then for um, when I want the organ to speak more loudly or for hymns or for say a prelude and postlude before the service or in a recital, I'll use more of the area called the grate, which has exposed pipes above us and to the side that speak out into the room okay. more loudly, more clearly, mm -hmm. um, that would be too loud for a choir, <laughs> but that uh, work great for organ repertoire when you really want the organ to speak out into the room. With a lot of clarity. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. So I have to ask, yes. uh, in the back, uh, I recall there being a really interesting two stops. And they're not very interesting on their own, but mm -hmm. together, uh, diapase and celeste. Can you tell me about that just a little bit? Yeah, so the foundation of um, an organ would be an eight-foot found eight foot foundation stop, which in this case, in the antiphonal organ, is the eight-foot open diapason. So actually, it really is a, it's, um, an important stop because it... Um, so it really is important. Yeah. Just the eight foot foundation, to have a beautiful eight foot foundation stop is important in an <laughs> instrument. And what Goulding and Wood, um, I'm not sure whose idea it was, but they've added a Celeste, uh, which is, so you can get an, an undulation in the, in the back of the room mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's an unusual stop. So it's, it's a completely different stop, you know, it's a rank that's tuned differently. So you have the original foundation stop and then you have another set of pipes tuned slightly sharper, which when pulled on together produce this beautiful sort of wavy effect. And then, yeah, you don't see that? I haven't seen it anywhere else. No, usually those kind of um, undulating stops are going to be strings or flutes. Exactly, exactly. Very unusual to have them then be principal uh, sound, <laughs> so. While we're on the subject, is there anything about the antiphonal organ that you find particularly interesting? Do you use it a lot, or uh, how do you feel about the antiphonal organ? I use the antiphonal, which is the, the pipes in the back, I use them to support hymn singing mm -hmm. quite often. So the, the main sound and the color of the hymns is going to come from the front. We have a bigger variety of reeds and strings and mutations in the front. So that's sort of where the color comes from. Mm -hmm. And the antiphonal, it has um, only principal and flute sounds that, can, that I use to support the sound because um, when the, even though the space is fairly resonant, mm -hmm. when you get a lot of people in here, they absorb the sound. So the <laughs> sound of the organ doesn't travel as far. The more people you get in here, the less the sound of the organ actually travels. So the antiphonal comes in handy um, because you can help um, some of the people, encourage some of the people in the back of the room to sing as well yes. on yes. the hymns. And it can provide a fun um, antiphonal effect between the front organ and the back organ. Unfortunately, it's not, the back organ is not playable from a separate console, so you still have to do it from this, this one console. But um, Fortunate for the effect. organist up here, though. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah, right. One thing we didn't um, use is uh, some of the solo stops. There's mm -hmm. a beautiful tuba stop mm -hmm. um, that I'll use for him playing. So 
when the, the congregation um, maybe doesn't know a hymn as well, or when you want to just vary your hymn playing a little bit, mm -hmm. the tuba comes in handy. It's also under expression oh. in the choir box, so you can soften it or loud it. And there's also, I think you'll get some footage of the trumpets in the back and on Shamad. So those obviously are not under expression and those could be quite loud. So you have to be um, judicious of when you decide to use them. Yes. Otherwise it can be um, a little, over, it can be overbearing if you're not careful because they're meant to be loud, right. you know. So right. just judicious and smart use of it will, um, will enliven some of the music and yeah. also get get people interested in the organ because they can see the trumpets, right? Indeed. They can see it, they get excited about it when they hear it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's another way to sort of invite people into thinking about what this big instrument is and what it can do. You know, the stained glass back there is telling a story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, of the four gospels, basically. And so you've, I like that you've got, um, when you come into this space, you see a story about, of word and music at mm -hmm. the same time, which is really um, it's nice. two what I think are um, complementary components to worship. You've got the music and the, the biblical foundation. That's lovely. Of our faith, yeah, so.
Here's Dr. Middleton playing an organ transcription of the prelude to D. Meisterzinger by Richard Wagner. In the middle of the arrangement, you hear a chorale that opens the drama with these words sung by a choir. Da zu dir der Heilen kam, willig seiner Taufe nahm, weiter sich dem Opfer tot, gab er uns des Heils Geburt. Das wir durch sein Tauf uns wein, seines Opfers wird zu sein. When the Savior came to thee, willingly accepted thy baptism, dedicating himself to a sacrificial death, he gave the covenant for our salvation, that we might be consecrated through baptism, so as to be worthy of his sacrifice. <laughs> 